Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. It's your buddy, Mike Racine, and we are... We have a very special episode for you. We're talking about, like I said, two great men named John. <laughs> Travolta, number one. <laughs> <laughs> number one. And Gotti. And uh, who else to be here besides a good friend of ours? An expert, probably, on both guys. <laughs> hey, Frankie T's back, everybody. Welcome back. Back by popular demand. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for being here, Talking Frank. about two guys. I, I know you guys are goofing around, but these both of these guys are my heroes. Yeah. yeah. Travolta. Got it. I love them both. Yeah. Um, my, where do you stand on these two guys? Well, I mean, you just found out about them that they exist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, they're both New York guys, right? No. Um, well, you know, Gotti. He's already made an error. Yeah. Stop looking at the notes. No, <laughs> John Travolta from Jersey. Travolta was, yeah, he was born in Jersey. Yeah. Um, and then like <laughs> Gotti was born in, in Jersey, the Bronx. Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Englewood. Uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, it is kind of funny because there there are a lot of parallels between these two guys. I guess. You know? Yeah, they both uh, rose to fame. Their names are John. <laughs> They're both, they were both <laughs> charismatic. I mean, right? John, there's been a lot of movie stars over the years. There's been like, you know, I don't know, George Clooney, who you want to say, Leonardo mm -hmm. DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. but you, you can't imagine the level of stardom that John Travolta exploded. Like when uh, he came out, he was on a in sitcom. The 70s? And this was, uh, nowadays you do a sitcom, then you get in the movies. It's very normal. Right. In the 70s, it was like you did TV, that was it. They didn't accept you. It was like, yeah. Henry Winkler never did movies, really. Yeah. But fucking Travolta did Welcome Back, Carter. Then he did Saturday Night Fever, which... Didn't that bring back disco? Like it was on its way out? Right. And it brought it back. That's insane. Then on the heels, and right after Saturday Night Fever, he does Grease. Mm-hmm. It's like it was like the one two punch. It was like it's, it's, it's like when he was filming Saturday Night Fever in Bay Ridge, mm -hmm. it was there was it was a mob scene, uh -huh. and that was an independent film. They didn't have money for like trails and shit. Well, it's so funny. I was watching the intro to Saturday Night Fever, and uh, it, first of all, the intro is like three minutes long. You would never have that in a film today, but it really does. Just like if you showed this to someone, like as the movie you were making, they'd be like, "This looks like shit. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing?" Because it's just him walking around holding a can of paint. Checking out girls, and staying alive is playing. Checking yeah. out, checking out booties. <laughs> yeah. I like the second one he checks out. What the oh, second the, girl the he checks out? Insane. I feel like the first oh. one was all right. Mm -hmm. The second one was fucking ridiculous. What did she I remember when that movie first came out. My uncle was like, "Did you get a look at the second girl he checks out? <laughs> the one in the brown dress, mod on." <laughs> so you saw it in theaters. Yeah, I still go see it in theaters every time. It, it was uh -huh. at Bam two years ago. Oh, oh was it? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I was there. How how old were you um, when it came out? Ten. Okay. Because, I mean, I've never, I haven't seen Saturday Night Fever. This episode's kind of thrown together, folks. I got some, uh, we had some stuff going you on. You never saw Saturday Night Fever? Never saw Saturday Night Fever. But I watched, I watched some clips. I watched the right. intro. and It's um, such a good movie. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of people look at it as like this artifact and like time capsule and musical or whatever. But you, you take the music out of the movie, you still mm -hmm. got a good movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great story. Yeah. And Travolta was so fucking good in it. Yeah. It was like Marlon, like a Marlon Brando-esque performance. That's how good he was in the movie. Yeah. So good. What what is it that's special about that movie? I mean, like what like Well, it's about a guy. Well, I relate to it cuz like as I was pra I practically am that guy. Mm -hmm. Cuz I went to discos, but yeah. and you know, you, he was in a family that was hypocritical and they just wanted him to get a fucking job. Right. And all his friends were a bunch of losers. So I did watch a couple clips and the one clip that that I watched was uh yeah, he's sitting down to dinner with his family and they're like they're smacking each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> totally real. It was like yeah. fucking so realistic. Yeah. He comes home, they're like, You're late. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, but it's like uh it's like he wanted to do something different. And like, mm -hmm. you know, I remember growing up, I wanted to do something. I wanted to do, I was really into stand up comedy and and dancing and music and DJing and acting, but if you wanted to do something like that, they would be like, "What are you? What are you? Fruit? Yeah, you know, get, join the union. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, what a I mean? union job. Yeah, and that that movie. That's what that movie was about. Right. Yeah. But it really everybody related to that movie. Because even you didn't have to be Italian. You didn't have to be from Brooklyn. A lot. So many people related to that story. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what's funny to me, Frank. It, it it like it does kind of feel like th there is a correlation between the mob and what we do because it is kind of like a way out of um the sort of like mundaneness of life yeah and, and all the kiss asses go forward 
Yeah. Same thing. I, I, that's why mob, I can't, wait in, in the mob too. Oh, what are you kidding me? Yeah. When I was growing up, I, so many of my friends were so impressed with, with gangsters, and they would just fucking hang around and kiss up to me. It used to make yeah. me sick. Yeah. Now when I'm around the comedy scene and I see people doing it, I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't do it to become a gangster. I'm not going to do it to become a comic. Right. Mm. I don't kiss nobody's ass. Right. Yeah. You know so I, I guess mean? gangsters kind of had that same insecurity where it's like they want to be loved. They want. Yeah. They they love all these kids kissing their ass. Yeah. And fucking whatever headline is lo- you love it when hoping Mike is kiss your ass. Don't don't oh, fucking I love lie. it. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and actually, like I I have I. I have met, I mean, there's a guy, I don't want to say his name, but this guy is like an Olympic level ass kisser because he knows exactly, because I am sort of at a point where like some people will kiss my ass a little bit and it's like, yeah, it does, it does feel good. And some people just know how to kiss your ass in the way. It's almost <laughs> right like on they your play, asshole. They, right on your asshole. They yeah. play to your specific insecurity, you know? You know what? And like, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. They, they, they're fucking... I hate it. I call yeah. we call them climbers. Me and Conrad Roth were always fucking. Oh, yeah, we're, that's all, good. we're like the we're like the tag team bitching about people. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I I'm I'm nobody, right? But I'm just, I'm a little popular. Yeah. So like sometimes when somebody new comes in the scene, they're like, oh, they think that, like I'm somebody they should be you nice to. Help them. And then then when they <laughs> and then when they realize I'm just a self sabotage and psycho, like, they they move yeah, right off. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I thought Frank was somebody I should be nice to. <laughs> I'm, running then, the, I'm running the show in Brooklyn right now, and I tried to get Frank on it like two weeks in a row. I'm like, can you do a spot? The first week he's like, no, nah, I can't. I'm sick. The next one, I'm like, I was Frank, sick. Come, I was come sick. by and do a spot. You said I'm kind of sick, which I, I, is like I, it doesn't sound like you were sick enough to miss a spot. I was sick, and I and I also that that night I lost my joke book and I was in a tizzy. Mm-hmm. That's that's a true story. That's fair. Okay, it's like uh, masculinity is being looked down upon these days. Yeah, somebody in the Metro newspaper wrote a review about Gotti, mm-hmm. and uh, we know it's not a good movie. Mm-hmm. We knew it wasn't going to be good. It wasn't well sure. crafted or anything. That's sure. fine. But they attacked Kevin Connolly, and they're like, Kevin Connolly of that cesspool entourage. Why is entourage a cesspool? Entourage was a appointment <laughs> viewing for so many millions of people. Mm-hmm. That 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 show was a, a fantastic show. Why is it a cesspool? Now, it's about I haven't seen Entourage in a while, but do you think maybe it was kind of like dumb and basic? And, no. You know, like, oh, <laughs> it's just an uh, easy we're target. Gonna get, we're going to have them get in the mansion and fuck the girls. and So what? Well, yeah. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. yeah. I want a mansion. I want to fuck girls. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a little bit about Gotti, Frank, because I did uh, I did Chapo Trap House a few weeks ago. I went to see the Gotti movie with a couple of those guys. I mean, yeah, it was fun. Was it was a bad go. movie. I know. I wanted, you to, I, I wanted you to meet those guys. Well, why do you want me to meet those guys? Aren't they like I liberal faggots? <laughs> <laughs> what are yeah, they? you could say that. Are, are they the kind of guys that call everybody toxic? Are um, they like that? No, no, they're more. They're more like they're like. I guess they're like Bernie Bros. Well, I don't even know what that is. They're like uh, farther they're, left. Uh, yeah, you pay more Dem taxes Sox, and you get democratic social. Like, you get health care. Health care. No, I got no health and stuff. Yeah, Medicaid. Oh, okay. Medicaid. I don't know why everybody's everybody shit on Bush for years. I was fine on the Bush. I'm fine on the Trump. The Iraq War. No, oh, Trump. That didn't affect my life. Trump just fu- <laughs> Trump just like <laughs> fucked up the last two days pretty hard. A million, a million dead Iraqis. <laughs> yeah, but who cares? What is, right? what is a dead? <laughs> I, know how, right. how is my life uh, affected by dead Iraqis? Uh well, it, it's probably bad to kill other people. Right, but what does that have to do with me? Well, I don't know, but isn't shouldn't we care about the world and others? I care and, about me. Mm-hmm. I got one foot in the street. You know who worries about all this <laughs> shit? The you know, premise is though that the Iraqis. Listen, should, you know who cares about all this? Uh, too, politi- you, know? you know who cares about political shit? People who are fine financially. So they're like, I got no fucking problems. So now let, let me go be a bleeding heart cocksucker. Yeah, mm. I got no time to worry about other people. I'm worried about myself. Excellent right. point. Right. I can't even afford to fucking clean out my Amazon cart. But it's not. It's not good to start wars. Who start wars? It's We're fucking. Not good they to start, start with us. Wars. They start with us. No, they don't. Yeah, they're always starting with us. We do it first. Ah, we do not. So you such a, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like Trump had to sit down with that Chinese guy. Yeah. No, but I didn't see Obama doing that. <laughs> you mean Kim? Kim Jong Un. Yeah, you had to sit down with him. <laughs> that Chinese guy. I didn't see Obama I didn't doing even it. Realize he he went North Korea. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever he is. <laughs> Oh man! I it didn't was, see Obama having to sit yeah. down with the Chinese yeah. guy. Did well, Obama have a no, sit down with the didn't. Chinese guy? No, yeah, we're not supposed to. <laughs> we're not supposed to acknowledge China. It's like a, a republic or whatever because of Taiwan. You know. No, you know what? No. We're not. We're not at war currently. I, everybody wants to say. As soon as you say Trump, people get upset. I'm like, why? You feel like you're supposed to? Because mm-hmm. the news says you're supposed to. Because the news is biased. Right. I'm not conservative, but I give him a. Ch- I give every president a chance. Mm-hmm. Whoever's the president. I support him. Yeah, but he hasn't done well for your comedy career. 
Yeah, only because the li- <laughs> this is what it is. There we go. Trump, Trump. It, now we're making everybody needs yeah, to chill. So it has affected your life. It has affected my life because guys like Negative, us can't quite even negatively. Say, yeah, but the the, the media say. is a bunch of alarmists. Mm-hmm. The liberals are a bunch of alarmists, and Trump is a fucking psycho. So it's like everybody together needs to chill out. Right. Trump needs to chill out. He's, he needs to stop saying fucking shit that upsets these fucking. What people. about the Mexican kids in cages though? Are they in cages? Yeah. How do you know? How do you know they're not having Chinese food? <laughs> yeah, they might be dude, playing. There's a set they, they probably get actors. How do you know they're not having fun? They, yeah. they probably say, yeah. They probably <laughs> gave they, 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 they probably gave Chinese food etch sketches. Oh. They're, probably, they're, they're having the best time. <laughs> they be away from their parents. Oh, oh yeah. Hey. Well, sleeping yeah. in a bathtub with their cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. You think Mexicans are having cushy lives that they're taking away from? Oh, my God. Whatever. <laughs> Me- yeah, did you hey. see the soccer fields down? <laughs> no bad. <laughs> These yeah. detention centers. You know what? The, if you're here illegally, the key word is illegally. Mm-hmm. Sure. Nobody should be here illegally. My uh, family didn't come here illegally. They got here. They came here. Every <laughs> Italian came here. <laughs> my family did not come here illegally. Paper, but there weren't WAP, any. Right? Yeah, WAP is no, without papers. They came here. No, not my family. My family came here to work. My family came here on a golden <laughs> ravioli boat. Well, they came here because there was work for them. All right, all right. But there's work for Mexicans. What? Uh, fetching olive oil? Well, obviously, they're coming here if there's work. <laughs> obviously, they're coming here, uh, right? If, if they're coming here, there's jobs. My family came here to, to build My no family jobs. came here to build the city. And they're coming here to, to you know. To fetch olive oil. <laughs> yeah, to drive you around. Do me a favor. When you get a to chance, d- another Diet Coke. All right. What would right. you ask me before? Something about Travolta? Uh, well, let's talk about Gotti for a little bit. I had a question is... about Travolta and yeah. Saturday Night Fever. Mm-hmm. So he was really good at dancing, right? Yeah. So, like, how do you guys get good at... It seems like all Italians are good at dancing. Would you characterize that as correct? Uh, you just got to move your hips. It's part of the... Right. How it... do you practice without being called names by your friends? Well, you, well, just... you know what's interesting? The disco scene was half Italian-American and half gay. So all that g- seems so all like gay. <laughs> <laughs> seems like if you went to a nightclub. Pairing. If you went to a nightclub in the seventies, half the club was Italian kids from Brooklyn. The other half was homosexuals. And you got along. Yeah. Hmm. It doesn't seem like a normal pairing. Well, we both like disco. I still like disco. I still collect it on vinyl. Right. It's great music. Yeah. How did you learn how to dance? From watching people, and I just imitate. Same thing with comedy. I went to the open mic. Or whatever, I watch, you know, Dice and Sarah Silverman, I imitate them. Hmm. You get better, and then you get better. Well, there, well, there is a weird thing with Italians now, or, or, or not now, but there always there is kind of always that conflict where it's like, do we assimilate and identify with white people, or do we, like, maintain our, our culture? That, that has it, happened. I mean, I mean, most Italians, uh, you, 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 culture, you're really into being a, a Ginzo. But m- but most Italians, <laughs> f- they forget about the. No. They they're embarrassed about it. You know, like a, there's some yeah. black people like that. They're elitist and they 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 they, they don't do well in urban rooms because like they, a, they sound yeah. white. Yeah, yeah. And and they want to assimilate and be just a you know regular mm-hmm. guy. And they look down on people who sound hood or whatever. Mm-hmm. I've seen I've seen I see black people hating on their own kind. I see Italian people hating on their own kind. I see Hispanics mm-hmm. hating on their own kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because because like white Anglo Saxon Saxon culture, it is pretty like boring. And it is. There's nothing really great about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I guess people do try to assimilate. And um, they had an award show one year, uh, the Italian American Awards, mm-hmm. and they gave the the lifetime achievement to Alan Alda. They did. Yeah, and they never <laughs> had a Italian? second one because Italians just want to be white. Yeah. They're like, no, we don't want this. But the, the Italian American Awards. When did that Why happen? Did they In give the seventies. Because <laughs> he's a great Italian American. Yeah. He wow. he's great. He's a great actor, writer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's too bad there wasn't a second one. Yeah, they didn't have a second one. Mm-hmm. You know who won uh, uh, an award? Uh, they gave the Italian American of the Year, James Kahn. Yeah, and he's Jewish. He's Jewish. That's so funny. <laughs> I love James Kahn. Yeah, he's a great actor. All right. So anyway, so I did Chapo. We were talking about the Gotti movie, and it's like, yeah, they were like shitting on the movie, but then they were also shitting on like Gotti. The man, you know, and I, think I, I listened to that episode. Listen to episode. I had to shut it off. Yeah, because <laughs> I felt like they were being disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, you could tell him I said that. What? What yeah. specifically rubbed you? The, First of all, the neither one. Are they comedians? Um, hey, they're funny guys. Do they do stand up? No, it's I, I, I could tell. Yeah. No, they. No, they're, they're trying to be funny. They do and, politics and, they're, and, they're, and Twitter, and, and, and they should and leave that to people who really actually well. are funny. Yeah. No, they were just shitting on Gotti and shitting on doing you know whatever. I don't like. I like Gotti. Yeah. There is something kind of like, I mean, because Gotti, so when Gotti was, let's go back to Gotti's early life. He was the, he was a young guy. His father was a day laborer. 
There were 13 kids in his family. He yeah. resented his father because his father couldn't, like, provide. And I think that is, like, a fundamental part of who he is. And it's kind of the same thing as Travolta's character in Saturday Night Fever, where it's like, yeah, you're, like, a nobody. His and it's father like, was out of work. Do? Yeah, his father. So, like, what do you what do you do with that? There's a scene in Saturday Night Fever where he gets, a, like, a, a dollar raise. Uh-huh. A two dollar raise. I was race. watching that too. And his father goes. Now, now that's technically that's a that's a week. Or no, a, I, I don't know. If, I don't really know what it was. Because I'm going to give you two two dollar fifty cents. You know, race. in the eighties, I was making uh, 125 a week. Yeah. And then the guy gave me a 25 dollar a week raise, and uh-huh. I felt I felt it. Yeah. 25 dollars a week in 1983 was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe it was two dollars. But he tells his father about it. And his father's like, "Oh, why didn't you tell me how much is it?" He's like, two dollars." He's like, two dollars. He goes, "You all? I never saw somebody so happy about a two dollar raise. What the fuck yeah. is the matter with you?" <laughs> His father was just a fucking like that, and my father's like that. My grandfather was like that. Even though I love my grandfather, they would just like, they would just like mentally f- uh, fuck you. You know, they be they were both like fucking like very mentally abusive guys. Uh-huh. And Italian Americans are like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's they always why, resent their kids. Why kid. is that? Why is that? I don't know. I think my father and my grandfather were jealous about how much attention their wives gave me. Uh huh. Like my mother and my grandmother treated me like I was a king. Yeah. And I don't think they like that. Yeah. yeah. Would you say that they made you as tough as you are now? Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. Mm. Well, my grandfather, definitely. So that's, I mean, like, that seems like an Italian form of love. What were their personalities like? Did they, did, were they charismatic like you? or were My they father isn't, like, yeah. but uh, my grandfather my was. not really either. Yeah. Yeah, my grandfather was a, my grandfather wore, was a mason for the transit authority. Okay. Mm. Yeah, he was a great guy. I liked him a lot. Yeah, good union job. <laughs> what? Good union job. Yeah, he uh, he used to bring home the chief every Tuesday. Yeah, you know what that is? The newspaper, the chief. No, it lists all the jobs for the city that you could take the test. Uh-huh. And he's like, he still want me to take the test. So the guy who works in the booth in the transit authority. I said, you want me to just sit in the booth? He goes, yeah. that's a good job. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They make a lot of money. I was like, I want to be a DJ, Poppy. He's like, DJ. <laughs> he's gonna be a DJ. <laughs> you listen to this guy. <laughs> That's kind what, of what do you f- think you're better than us? Yeah. That's the funny thing, just having like a union job like that. I can't imagine living your life that way and just the, being like, oh, what, I get it. What's morning. that noise? The AC. But it's gonna come on the on the podcast, no? Huh? Hold on a second. No, it's it yeah, it's not it's not like there's noticeable. a switch on this AC called mo- it says money saver. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> and it just switched on. <laughs> yeah, I had it yes. on. That's anyway, the juice switch. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get them. <laughs> um <laughs> 